Hello everyone. Welcome to today's live broadcast, High Efficiency Spry Technology for Micro RNA Applications, presented by Dr. B. Ali. We are excited to bring you this educational web seminar presented by LabRoots and sponsored by Beckman Coulter Genomics. Beckman Coulter Genomics, headquartered in Danvers, Massachusetts, sets the standard for providing expert next generation and Sanger sequencing services with bioinformatic solutions. Life science, healthcare businesses, as well as academic and government institutions worldwide rely on Beckman Coulter Genomics to deliver the highest quality data, robust analyses, and innovative thinking. From classic to cutting edge, Beckman Coulter Genomics has proven experience and expertise on a wide range of technology platforms. Every associate at Beckman Coulter Genomics is dedicated to delivering total customer service. To learn more about our sponsor, please visit www.beckmangenomics.com. I'm Brenda Kelly Kim of LabRoots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Before we begin, I'd like to remind everyone that this event is interactive, and we encourage you to participate by submitting as many questions as you want at any time during the presentation. Just click on the green Q&A button located in the lower left of the presentation window and type your question into the box that appears on your screen. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of our presentation. Also, please notice that you will be viewing the presentation in the slide window. If you need to enlarge this, just click on the screen icon located at the lower right. Finally, if you have any trouble seeing or hearing this presentation, please let us know by clicking on the support button at the top right of the presentation window or you can use the Q&A button to let us know you're having a problem, lower left. Now I'd like to, uh, our audience to join me in welcoming Dr. Bina Lee. Dr. Bina Lee has worked at Beckman Coulter Life Sciences for five years, where she is responsible for leading microRNA and RNA applications. She has 10 years of experience in genomic and genetics research. She has a PhD in microbiology and molecular biology from Texas A&M University, it's a postdoctoral fellow at Harvard Medical School, sponsored by the Leukemia Society of America. Her research experience was in the fields of fungal biology, cell signaling, small molecules, and planned pathogenicity. For more information about Dr. Lee, please click on our name to see more. Dr. Lee, I'm going to turn it over to you now. Hi. Hi, good morning. My name is Bina Lee. I'm an application scientist from Batman Coulter Life Sciences. My topic for my presentation today is high efficiency, sprite technology for microRNA and RNA applications. Here is my outline. First, I will give you a brief introduction on sprite technology. Sprite stands for solid phase reverse immobilizations. I will uh, describe how we optimize our sprite chemistry for microRNA extraction using the PharmaPure kit for the formalin fixed paraffin embedded tissues. I will then show you the comparison results between the PharmaPure kits versus a common column kit. In the second half of my talk, I will describe to you the method development for microRNA enrichment using our sprite solutions. So normally our sprite paramagnetic bits uh, nucleic acid purif purification kits uh, come with uh, a lysis buffer containing proteinase K, a binding buffer, and wash buffer. Here is the typical basic three basic steps of a sprite procedure. In the first step, you just need to add your cell lysis to the magnetic beads. Nucleic acid will then draw and bound to the magnetic beads in the presence of binding buffer with the clouding reagents. The contaminants were then removed by wash buffer and multiple ethanol washers. Nucleic acid would then eluted you using nucleic acid free water. So it allows you to have a maximum flexibility in the downstream applications. As you can see here, that spire procedure does not require any centrifugations or filtration steps. And it allows automation-friendly procedure. 
Most of you probably are very familiar with our PCR cleanup and next gen sequencing cleanup kits such as Ampere XP. I would like to use this opportunity to highlight our DNA and RNA extraction kits using our sprite chemistry. We have a kit that's for the cell culture, tissues, blood samples, serum and plasma. Today I'm going to focus on the PharmaPure kits for the FLP samples. Here are the different options that we provide the automations workstation for genomic applications for nucleic acid purifications and next gen sequencing library constructions. It depends on your throughputs and your lab applications. We can offer and provide multiple configurations for the automation workstations to fit your application needs. I just want to give you this an example of how easy to use using our Biomax Sprite user interface. All you need is to just click the start green buttons and then you can choose how many rows of sample you like to run per, per, per run and then Biomax software will, will then uh, pop out this user interface to give you how many tick boxes, what kind of level type is required for the run. And then the, the reagent calculator is very friendly use, usage. It allows you to have a minimum dead volume and also prevent any handling errors throughout the, your um, procedures. So the question we ask is, can Beckman's spark chemistry be used for microRNA extractions? Most of us will know about what's microRNA, why it is important. MicroRNA are stable, very stable, non-coding ribonucleic acids. It's very small fragments, around 22 nucleotides. And a single microRNA can target several up to hundreds, thousands of genes regulations that gene can involve in multiple pathways and signaling pathway and disease development. It is our desire to, and also all the research is desire to use bio, microRNA as biomarkers for disease development and use it as a potential therapeutic target. Just want to use this slide to show you how we optimize our protocols for microRNA extraction using our PharmaPure kits. We basically optimize each step in the arrow here, in the binding steps, washing step, and different atonal washing steps. Here shows the experiment designs. So we use one microgram of 22 oligonucleotides as a test samples, and then we determine what's the best binding, rebinding wash conditions for microRNA recovery. The recovery amount were then measured by nano drops and also visualized by algorithms. Once we optimize our protocols, we then uh, use the protocol for the real sample extraction. In this case, we use the FMP samples. We then measure the microRNA expression by using the Techman's RT qPCR microRNA assay. Here's the results. The year of 22 oligonucleotides by using different concentration of binding buffer. And for each of the test conditions, we use one microgram of 22 oligonucleotides. We then elute it in 40 microliter of water. And if the recovery reach, reaches 100%, we expect to get 25 nanogram per microliter. So with that, I want to show you the results in here that the length two is the control unpurified 22 oligonucleotide with low 25 nanograms per length. Length one is the 10 DNA size marker. 
Land to it, land line are the different conditions of the binding buffer. And I want you, you to focus on land number line. The condition line nine actually give us pretty much 100% recovery as compared to the control samples. We then fix the binding buffer using the condition number nine. Similarly, we uh, use the same strategy to optimize the washing conditions and rebinding conditions. I just want to show you the one of the exa another examples in here that one microgram of 22 oligonucleotides were used as the test sample and then eluted in the same volume, uh, 40 microliters. And you can see here that then, uh, with the fixed binding condition, we now optimize the washing conditions and I want you to focus on lane seven, five, seven, and eight. They both give the highest yield under these conditions. So we decided to use the condition five for the further test because less volume was used for the uh, for for the lane condition number five. So once we optimize the binding rebinding washing conditions. We then use the protocol for the real sample extractions. And to confirm we have the microRNA recovery, we use the LED7 genes as our uh, target gene uh, to look at the microRNA expressions. Uh, for the, we use the tissue control with the 50 nanogram per, uh, per reactions. And then for the FLP extracted RNA, we either use one to five microliters and then we follow the lab technologies, the reverse transcript test and the master uh, universal master mix for the PCR reactions. Here's the, the uh, qPCR uh, results. The amplification plot show that the LED7 gene microRNA was successfully extracted, used minor, uh, manually extracted FAP samples. And the control, you can see the FAP sample give you uh, one cycle high, um, higher expressions as compared to the tissue control. We then uh, move our manually extracted protocol to the biomed automation extraction method. And here, what you see here is the amplification plot from the 12 different FAP samples. Uh, extracted from the biomed automation methods. The average CT cycle was about 23.5. We then compare the RNA yield uh, between the biomed automation extraction with the manually extracted RNA. Here, the graph shows you that the 48 samples, the average of 48 samples prepared from each method. We show that biomedic uh, automatic, automatic extraction give a higher, slightly higher RNA yields as compared to the manually extracted samples. And we believe this is because to the automation preparations, you have a very consistent of the pipettings and less speed loose to our procedures. And we then uh, look at the RNA recoveries, compare the, comparing the, the RNA sample prepared from the biomed automation versus the manually extracted samples. The left graph show you the left seven microRNA gene expression. We actually look at a different microRNA and just show you the left seven gene, which is the universal uh, microRNA um, that expressed in most of the tissues. And you can see that the, I hope you can see it. Um, this is the left side is biomed and then the right side is the manual extracted sample. They both give ways uh, comparable um, microRNA expressions or uh, recovery. And then the right cut, right graph show you the messenger RNA expressions. So we look at uh, also multiple uh, housekeeping genes. And sh here I show you the actin and the B2M gene expression again compared to the biomed versus uh, the manually extracted sample, we show that the uh, both uh, methods give you very comparable 
messenger gene expressions with the same input for the RNA amount in the reactions. With the next, uh, with the next few uh, slides, I'm going to switch gear to talk about we compare the FLP kits versus the MIEZ columns. So we extracted the um, RNA from the human, different type of human tissue, liver, breast, and the colon tissue, the FLP samples, and from both protocols. We then measured and look at the RNA yield and purity. And then we also look at the RNA quality using the pickle chips uh, by analyzers, pickle chips. And then we measure the microRNA expression using the microRNA assays with a different concentration of RNA. And here shows the result of the RNA yields. So for each protocol, we extracted uh, four slices of 10 micron of FPE, FFPE samples. And you can see that the average, and then we eluted the, the, the RNA with the same volume, 40 microliters. So here shows that with the pharmacopoeia kit protocols, the average concentration is about 257 nanogram per microliter. The yield is about 10 microgram for the 40 microliters. And then average of the 10 microns per slices give about 2.5 micrograms. As compared to the MIEZ columns, at the average concentration is about 50 nanograms, average yield about 2 micrograms with that 0.5 micrograms per 10 microns. So we show that the, the RNA yield is higher using the pharmacopoeia kit. We then uh, look at the RNA quality. Inconsistent with the nanodrop measurement, we show that uh, in order to reach, the, to get the unsaturated bioanalyzer signals, uh, for the pharmacopoeia kit extracted RNA sample, we had to dilute five times higher and in order to get the same signal, similar signals uh, as compared to the column extracted RNA. So as you see that there's one to 10 dilutions for the MIEZ micro RNA extracted sample. And then from appeal kits, we did the one to 50 dilutions. We then look at the micro RNA recoveries. So in consistent in the early uh, observations, so we did the two concentration for the uh, RT-QPCR reactions, 100 nanograms versus 50 nanograms, um, based on the nanodrop measurement. And then, the, the, as we expected, uh, we, the, uh, the QPCR data give us the similar CT values from both uh, for the 100 nanograms, it's about 23 cycles. And then from, for the 50 nanograms, it's, about, it's 24 cycles. And, and look at the dilution factor for the pharmacopoeia kits, we, we had to dilute five times higher as compared to the column, column extracted RNA. And so one fifth of the undiluted pharmacopoeia extracted RNA was needed to reach the same cycle values. So, so we show that in this particular experiment that uh, the Pharmacopoeia kits do give us, they give us the higher uh, RNA as compared to the column kits. So we then look at the RNA purities uh, compared to the RNA extracted from these two methods. So uh, they both give us, uh, the both methods give very comparable RNA purity in terms of OD260 to the OD280 ratios and OD260 to OD230 ratios. The next few slides, I'm going to uh, show you the clinical RFFE uh, samples, the RNA extracted from the clinical RNA uh, FFE samples. So what you see here is the 40 uh, samples, 20 tumor and 20 benign FFE samples from the patients. So what the customer did was the, they punched the region of interest uh, 
based on the pathology report. And they performed the RNA extracted extraction using other pharmacopoeia biomax methods. And as we expected, because this very highly degraded um, FFP RNA uh, samples, so we get uh, the the higher range between 400 to 6 micrograms, 400 nanograms to 6 micro, uh, micrograms of RNA. And then we use these 40 uh, samples. We then uh, uh, we we then uh, used uh, these 40 samples for the cDNA lab reconstruction for the next gen sequencing. And again, as we expected, because the dynamic range of the RNA uh, qualities, we get the the cDNA library yield from the 15 nanogram to 1.8 about 1.8 micrograms. And then, but when you look at the cDNA library quality, actually it's not as pretty decent. We were able to get uh, cDNA library range from 200 to 400. We then uh, pick up the three pair of the tumor and the benign samples for the next gen sequencing. Illumina next gen sequencing um, for the Illumina next gen sequencing. And what you look at here is we compare to the manually extracted library compared to the biomed uh, prepared library. And you can see very good correlation between the tumor A and tumor B. The tumor B and uh, A, sample A and sample B. For the uh, sample C, we see the lower uh, slightly lower uh, correlation, but it's what we expected because the RNA quality was to begin with was very poor. So for the FF, I just show you that the FLPE extracted from the pharma pill kit, uh, kits give you a uh, good quality of um, RNA. Uh, and also for the library prep and the QC data for the library. We also look at the gene expressions. Uh, I didn't show you here, but we also look at the three pair of the high, highly expressed, low expressed, and medium expressed genes uh, to complement with the qPCR. And they show very good correlations. And now I'm going to show you that the, for the FFP uh, pharma pill kits, we can use the kits for the low sample input, for, uh, such as uh, laser capsule micro dissected samples. What you see in this slide is the lab graph show you the RNA yield from the three pair of the tumor and the benign samples, and it range from the 15, 30, 35 nanogram to 70, 75 nanograms. And this was measured by the ribogrim uh, assay. And the right panel shows the low signal of fragmented uh, FLP RNA extracted from the LCN samples. We then look at the gene expression data, and we saw that the uh, microRNA expression was successfully extracted from uh, the the LCM samples. We look at the control and the microRNA biomarkers. From this slide, it shows that no significant differences between the tumor versus the, the tumor versus the benign samples. So with that, I just conclude that my first part of my talk that the micro, we successfully showed that high microRNA here using the um, pharmacopoeia kits, and then it shows good quality of the cDNA library prep and then it can be used for the low sample input sample like LCMs. And if the biomech automation method is a simple, robust, and automation-friendly process. So then uh, I will have a few slides to talk about the, uh, how we optimize the protocol for the microRNA enrichment. So we ask the question, can we isolate microRNA from RNA fractions? In general, in information, surprise select was originally optimized for the developed for the double-stranded DNA 
publications. And we asked, can we use spike select for microRNA enrichment and RNA size selection? Here is the experiment design. So similarly, we're using one microgram of the uh, 22 and 53 oligonucleotides used as a test samples and determine what's the base binding conditions that can separate the 22 oligonucleotides from 53 oligonucleotides. We then measure the, the RNA recovery using the nano drugs and visualized by our growth gel. And we then, once we optimize the conditions, we then use the real sample ex um, for the microRNA enrichment. Here show you the recovery efficiency. So what you see here, um, that's the one microgram of 22 and the 53 oligonucleotides as an input samples. The upper band is the 53 oligonucleotides. The lower band is the 22 oligonucleotides. Then one's the DNA size marker. Then two is the control with the 25 nanogram of the per length. And I want to point you out to the length seven. The length seven conditions can bind to the 22 oligonucleotides more efficiently than the 53 oligonucleotides. We then further optimize the condition. I want to show you in the right panel here. I want you to focus on that. Uh, so we are able to uh, further optimize the condition that allow us to purify 22 nucleotides, but they did not capture, capture the 53 oligonucleotides. We then, once we optimize the protocol, we then compare to the middle yield column enrichment protocols. And I want, so we, uh, so we start with the one microgram of 22 with the, and the 53 oligonucleotides and then it rotate in the same volume. What you see here, the length two is the control sample. Length three are the spike protocol. Length six, four to six are the middle yield columns protocols. I want you to focus on the three and the, the length six because the same amount of the RNA was loaded on, on the gel. And you can see that the middle yield columns bind to the 22 oligonucleotides more efficiently than the 53 oligonucleotides. In contrast, the middle yield column protocols bind to the 53 oligonucleotides more efficiently than the 22 oligonucleotides. You then compare to the length 4 and length 5, it was loaded in the different amount, higher amount was loaded. And you can see that the, obviously that the, the 22 oligonucleotide was captured but with the less efficiency with the middle yield column protocol. With that, uh, here's the microRNA process overview. So in the microRNA enriched protocol, we have three binding steps. The first step is bind to the NED nucleotides over the 200, 200 oligonucleotides. And then once the, then you can transfer the supernatin to the new well, you apply to the second binding buffer, which binds to the 90 to 200 nucleotides. We then transfer, you can transfer the supernatant to the third well, and the third binding step allows you to recover the frag smaller fragment size, 18 to 60 nucleotides. And so here's show you the microRNA enrichment uh, results. So you can, if you, Follow me with that three steps. So, and then you, when you look at the uh, results, so I want to show you that we can enrich it primarily if you combine the three steps. It allows you to enrich primarily 18 to 60 nucleotides. And then um, you can skip, you can also combine the first and the second binding steps. It will allow you to enrich 90 to 200 oligonucleotides. You can see in the bioanalysis results in here. And in the, if you, if you wish to just recover 18 to 200 nucleotides, you can skip the second binding steps and it allow you to uh, recover 18 to 200 nucleotides.
So I'm doing, and once we optimize the protocol, we then compare to the real sample extraction uh, microRNA enrichment using the sprite protocol and middle yield column. So this table shows you the average of uh, one mi microgram of the total RNA plus microRNA, and we apply the protocols. And you can see that uh, for the sprite protocols, we were able to enrich 61% uh, as compared to the middle yield columns, it only enriched about 51%. So here's the bioanalysis enrichment profiling. For the spice select protocols, so we enrich, uh, you can see here that it enriched 18 to about 16 nucleotides. For the middle yield column, it enriched microRNA from 18 up to 150 nucleotides. So in summary, we show you the spike chemistry demonstrated very high efficiency microRNA enrichment and spread select solutions provide very flexible microRNA enrichment and RNA site selection as a, uh, for the RNA site selection procedures. And we also show you that this, I also show you that the spike chemistry as a very flexible and it's very simple and robust automation friendly process. So this is my last but not my least slides. I want to give thanks to my collaborators uh, uh, from Makila and Vela from Dana Faber Institute, and our collaborator from UC Davis uh, from Kim Labs Lab, Randy, Sidas, and Alicia. Also, I want to thank my, our Beckman colleague, uh, John and Sarah for helping the Biomax uh, automation methods uh, and uh, Isabel also help for different type of sprite uh, techno uh, technical support. With that, um, I want to thank you, you for your attention and any questions. Thank you very much, Dr. Lee, for that informative presentation. Let me just uh, give our audience a second to hear how they need to submit their questions. If you have a question you'd like to ask Dr. Lee, now is a great time. Just click on the green Q&A button at the lower left of the presentation window and type your question into that box that appears on your screen. Click send and we'll have your question. We're going to give our audience just a few minutes to find the question box and put in their question. Let's see what we have. All righty, I'm just going to send it back to Dr. Lee now to see if she has any final comments for our audience. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, uh, I think we have the, all the app notes and all the information on our website. And if any, yeah, you can contact our website and our, your local sales rep if you have any question on my presentation. Thank you again, Dr. Lee, for your time. And of course, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Beckman Coulter Genomics for making this webcast possible today. Before I go, I want to let everybody know that today's webcast will be available for replay on demand through March 2016. You'll receive an email from LabRoots alerting you when this webcast is available for viewing, and we would invite you to pass that email along to your colleagues who may not have been able to attend today's live event. We hope to see you again. Thank you for logging on today. Goodbye.